Broncos fans, the Denver Broncos show back here again to do another video. In this video, I'll be recapping and breaking down the Broncos 41 to 20 win over the Arizona Cardinals on Sunday. Great performance by the Broncos. Great way to respond coming off the the bye week. And uh, yeah, I mean, just a, an absolute domination by the Broncos. It's it's great to beat Arizona in this fashion. Give them their first loss. We moved to three and one. So get back on the winning track after the losses to Seattle. Um, and uh, this just a very impressive performance by the Broncos. Now looking at some of the good things we did here in this game, uh, starting on the offensive side of the ball, you had 568 total yards of offense here against Arizona Cardinals defense. We had 476 passing yards, 18 passing first downs. Just did a great job of being less conservative uh, on the offensive end, being more aggressive, taking shots down the field, and then just shredding the secondary. I mean, we pretty much did whatever we wanted to through the passing game and, and through the air. Uh, did a great job of attacking this defense vertically. And to put up 476 passing yards on a cornerback tandem of Antonio Camardi and Patrick Peterson, that's very impressive, and that says a lot about your offense. And just a great uh, performance by Peyton Mayne as well in the receiving core. Again, just being aggressive, taking shots down the field, and, and really shredding the secondary apart. Uh, we did a, a much better job of, of sustaining drives here in this game against Arizona. You look at the time of possession here. We controlled the tempo of the game. We had the ball for 35 minutes and 17 seconds. Arizona only had it for 24 minutes and 43 seconds. Again, did a great job of keeping drives alive, sustaining drives, something we have not done in the first three games offensively, especially uh, against Seattle and Kansas City. So you like seeing that. Did a good job of keeping our defense off the field, keeping drives alive. Um, and, and that starts with being aggressive. Again, playing at a fast tempo. 16 on our third down conversions. Did a great job offensively, again, of staying on the field, sustaining drives, keeping drives alive. And then defensively, on the flip side, you hold Arizona to only 3 of 16 on their third down conversions. So did a great job of getting off the field. We struggled mightily defensively uh, to do that against Seattle and Kansas City. We're, we're horrible on third down against both those teams. Uh, much better execution defensively there. Um, and, and a lot of that had to do, again, with the offense, keeping drives alive, sustaining drives, and allowing our defense to, to get some breathers, take some breaks, and be fresh when they got on the field. And that four receivers in this game with at least six catches. You like seeing that. Peyton Manning did a great job of distributing the ball all afternoon. Uh, he went 31 of 47 in this game for 479 yards, had four touchdowns and two interceptions. You don't like the two interceptions. They definitely were poor throws. Uh, one of them was, was a severely underthrown pass to Wes Welker. The other one was on the screenplay. Great play by Calais Campbell to pick that off. Pretty poor decision there by Peyton Manning to throw that pass. And Peyton Manning definitely did have some errant throws. He wasn't as accurate as he usually is. He had a lot of overthrows in this game. Um, his ball location wasn't as good as it usually is, but how can you really fault the guy? I mean, he had 480 yards pretty much and, and four touchdowns. He, he threw his 500th uh, career passing touchdown in this game, fittingly to Julius Thomas, who it seems has caught pretty much every touchdown thrown by Peyton Manning this season thus far. So, he still played great. You don't like the two interceptions. You don't like the miscues there. Um, he did have some errant throws, but Peyton Manning just did a great job, and, and he, he did a good job of of keeping the Cardinals defense guessing uh, again four receivers with six plus catches in this game did a great job of distributing the ball and, and not uh, allowing the defense to focus on one receiver just consistently uh, again had them on their heels and, and had them guessing. Marys Thomas finally broke out here in this game he had eight catches for a whopping 226 receiving yards he also had two touchdowns I mean he was phenomenal in this game uh, you know Demaryius Thomas is a guy that has looked fairly average throughout the first three games of the season and he pretty much made up for all those mediocre performances with this performance here against Arizona. He absolutely destroyed Antonio Camardi uh, throughout the game, and uh, he, he just looked like him old self. He was, he was explosive. Uh, the touchdown he, pass he caught on that little slant play uh, was just a thing of beauty. Love seeing that explosion, that speed by Demaryius Thomas, and then the 86-yard touchdown he had. Absolute beautiful ball, beautiful throw by Peyton Manning, uh, put it right in front of him, and then a little fingertip, ca uh, fingertip catch by Demaryius Thomas just burned Antonio Camardi um, and did a great job of catching that pass right in stride. Again, great throw by Peyton Manning there, and he just looked great. He looked like him old self, his old self. He was explosive, and uh, he did, I think, set a single game record for most receiving yards at 226 yards uh, in the history of the Broncos franchise, so congratulations to Demaryius Thomas on that. Emmanuel Sanders continues to play well and, and be really impressive. Uh, uh, he, he's he's starting to make people around here in Denver forget about who Eric Decker was. Uh, he has seven catches in this game for 101 yards. Uh, consistently beat Patrick P uh, Peterson throughout this game, which is very impressive. He had a great game against Richard Sherman. He's now had a great game against Patrick Peterson. Outrunning ability, I think, is some of the best in the NFL. 
and he consistently just gets open, uh, makes phenomenal catches. And you saw us even kind of line him up in the backfield, run a couple reverses with him. Again, I, I mentioned he can kind of be that joker position for us offensively, kind of like our Percy Harvin. And you saw the Broncos kind of utilize him a little bit like that in this game. So it was nice to see that. And again, his, his ability to get open, his kind of rapport with Peyton Manning, you can see that chemistry just building every week. And his route running uh, ability is just phenomenal to watch. He just consistently gets open and, and beats good corner week in and week out. Great game by Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, Julius Thomas once again played well. Six catches, 66 yards, and two TDs for him. Uh, did a great job of getting open and again has become kind of our go-to guy in the red zone. Caught Peyton Manning's 500th career passing touchdown that little out route in the red zone. Good to see us going back to DT and Julius Thomas getting them more involved in the offense, especially kind of after the lackluster performances they had against Seattle. And then Wes Welker again had a, a quietly uh, good game. Seven catches, 58 yards for Wes Welker. Consistently getting open on the uh, underneath routes. Peyton Manning uh, consistently going to him on third downs. Um, and he, again, he's kind of like that safety blanket for Peyton Manning. Uh, just does a great job on the underneath routes of getting open and, and allowing us to, to sustain drives. Wes Welker was a big reason in this game why we were able to keep drives alive because we had a lot of third and shorts in this game, third and three, third and fours. And we, we'd just go to Wes Welker on the underneath routes to get the, the first down conversions. Outscored the Cardinals 17-0 to in the fourth quarter. You love seeing that as well. Uh, again, kind of showed a little bit more of a killer instinct in this game than we had uh, so far this season. Uh, you know, we really struggled against the Colts and even Kansas City to finish those games off uh, in the fourth quarter and in the second half. And you didn't have that problem here. You, you, you again, outscore them 17-0 to in the fourth quarter. Show, show that killer ending. Keep kind of your foot on the throat. And you finished them off. I love seeing that out of the Broncos playing aggressively again, not being so conservative. And quarterback hits in this game. Three sacks. Uh, Von Miller and DeMarcus Ware combined for two and a half of those sacks. Uh, both those guys were great. Von Miller is really starting to look like his his old self. He's really kind of got that burst back, that first step quickness uh, off the line, that initial burst. He's got it back and he showed it in this game. He was all over Drew Stanton. Again, knocked him out of the game. Was all over Logan Thomas. Him and DeMarcus Ware uh, got consistent pressure uh, for us throughout this game. And, and both those guys have, have played really well so far this season. I think through four games they've combined for, I think, seven Seven sacks. He likes seeing that. And again, and Von Miller is starting to look like his his old self. That that rust on that knee is starting to come off a little bit. Great game by Von Miller. And you saw um, him go back to his patented little spin move in this game a couple times. That was that was great to see. Um, and and again, you had ten quarterback hits. It wasn't just Von Miller and Demarcus Ware. We did a good job of of, of rushing the passer as a team. T.J. Ward did a great job on a couple safety blitzes uh, of, of hitting the quarterback. Malik Jackson had a good game of getting to the quarterback. Uh, just a great job as a team rushing the passer, but again, it does start with Von Miller and DeMarcus Ware. Um, you hold the Cardinals to only 215 yards of total offense. You love seeing that. Defensively, we've kind of had this bend but not break theme, and we've given up a lot of yards offensively. You didn't see that here defensively. This was a complete shutdown performance by the defense. You hold the Cardinals to only 37 rushing yards in this game. They only average 1.9 yards per carry in this game. Great job defensively by Terrence Knight and Malik Jackson uh, closing uh, up those gaps uh, interiorly up front on the defensive line um, and allowing our linebackers Nate Irving, Danny Trevathan uh, to come clean it up and, and, and just a great game uh, defensively. Again, you, uh, responding out of the bye week. You saw um, in the game against Seattle, we really struggled to contain Marshawn Lynch. We really st struggled to stop the run against uh, him and then uh, and then Seattle's offense. And then we also struggled against Niall Davis and, and, and Kansas City. Terrence Knight, he had three tackles. And Malik Jackson as well had two tackles. Both those guys did a great job of filling up space, filling up gaps, um, and, and really uh, shutting down the, the, the Cardinals' run game. Again, you hold them to 1.9 yards per carry. You love seeing that. And the Cardinals only had 3.8 yards per play in this game. So defensively as a group, just did a great job of limiting the big play opportunities for the Cardinals um, and, and kind of forcing them to play it safe. Had a lot of three and outs in this game. Just an overall great performance by the Broncos defense. And our secondary did a great job in this game of containing Larry Fitzgerald and Michael Floyd. Uh, they only combined for four catches and 64 yards. Again, did a great job of limiting the Cardinals' uh, big play opportunities in this game. Michael Floyd only had one catch for seven yards. You love seeing that. Again, Floyd and Fitzgerald are two big physical wide receivers that can take uh, the top off of a defense. And our secondary did a great job of, of covering them all game and not allowing them to get open. Chris Harris had four pass deflections in this game. He was all over Michael Floyd uh, and, and shut him down. Chris Harris had a great game. Uh, in this game and, and really was huge for us uh, in, in containing Michael Floyd again to hold him to one catch for seven yards. I love seeing that. Uh, just a great game all around. Uh, I would say one of the more uh, complete games for the Broncos offensively and defensively. Our running game on the offensive end again continues to pretty much be lifeless. We only had 92 rushing yards in this game. We only had four rushing yards in the first half which is absolute, uh, absolutely pathetic and, and very embarrassing. 
where you're just extremely one-dimensional on the offensive end, no balance whatsoever. Did have a little bit of life to our running game there in the second half and, the, and in the fourth quarter. But, uh, man, four rushing yards in the first half, that is just absolutely pathetic. Monty Ball only had six carries in this game for seven yards. Again, that's pathetic. Monty Ball has really been poor this year at getting any yards after contact whatsoever. Really has struggled running in between the tackles and, and giving us a physical presence uh, in, in the run game and at the running back position. But it's not all his fault. Again, our offensive line has been very finesse in the running game. Our, our running backs usually have barely any time to, to see a gap and, and hit it. Um, and, you know, I, I think that's that's partly on the offensive line. It's, it's partly on Monty Ball for just being too patient. I think he, he waits way too long to see a gap and then burst through it. But our offensive line really doesn't give much gaps to, to, to run through. we got to be more physical with our run blocking. I've said it for four weeks now. They Something's got to change there. But, again, our, our running game did show a little bit of life there. Uh, in the second half and in the fourth quarter when Ronnie Hillman and Juwan Thompson came in. Ronnie Hillman uh, had 15 carries uh, for 64 yards in this game, averaged 4.3 yards per carry. So he liked seeing that. He had a solid day in this game. He did have some nice uh, uh, runs in between the tackles. And, and the difference between him and Monty Ball is he's not as patient. Again, he sees a gap. He bursts right through it. Monty Ball waits too long. And Monty Ball did get hurt in this game. He, he did hurt his groin, so he's going to be out for a couple weeks. So Ronnie Hillman and Juwan Thompson, C.J. Anderson, uh, they're going to get the bulk of the carries. Ronnie Hillman will be the starter. So maybe that's kind of the, the boost we need in our run game. Maybe it is Monty Ball. I, I don't think you put all the blame on him because, again, our offensive line has been pretty crappy in the run blocking. But, um, you know, maybe with, with him having a couple weeks to, to heal his growing up, uh, maybe it's been a nagging injury, been bothering him. Um, you know, maybe that, that will benefit our running game because, again, it did show a little life when Ronnie Hillman came in there. And then even when Jawan Thompson as well, he got a couple carries. Uh, the undrafted rookie out of Duke, he had three carries for 15 yards and a touchdown, averaged five point yards per carry. Um, again, is, is just much more of a physical bat than Monty Ball or Ronnie Hillman for that matter. He's much more of a downhill runner. He has a much better burst than both of them. And he's a guy that I've, I've been saying since preseason. I'd love to see him get a, a shot to start running back for us. And, and now he's getting it. He's also a guy that's getting a good, good blocker uh, so he can protect protect uh, in pass protection um, and you just kind of saw that that physicality that he runs with that downhill running style he runs it that burst he has uh, with the touchdown he had on the little halfback draw just right up the middle broke a couple tackles um, and was able to rush for a touchdown there so good games out of Hillman and Thompson but again the the rushing game for the Broncos offense has been lifeless uh, for the most part uh, so far throughout this this season, and then you lose the turnover battle. You have two two turnovers. The Cardinals had none in this game. Luckily, you still dominated again. The two picks by Peyton Manning, terrible throws, severely underthrew Welker, and the other one on the screen pass. But uh, luckily, you won. But Brandon McManus obviously is now our starting kicker. We cut Matt Prater. I don't know if I'm sure most of you have heard that uh, happened uh, early last week. He went two or three on his field goal attempts. I uh, did miss a 53-yard uh, field goal. Had all the leg for it. Just. Uh, was way wide left, but uh, he looked good as well. So good performance by Brandon McManus. Now move on to play the Jets in uh, New Jersey on Sunday. Not much to really say. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to make a preview video for the game because let's be real. I mean, we should destroy the Jets. I don't care if it's you know in their their stadium, our stadium, in, in fucking Ecuador, you know wh wherever it's at. It's played in the Bering Sea. I don't I don't care where we play the Jets at. We we should smash this team. We're we're better in every aspect of the game. But I mean, we do have to be. Uh, disciplined and we do have to play our best we can't play down to our competition this team has struggled with that at times throughout the, the past couple seasons uh, with Peyton Manning so hopefully that won't be the case on Sunday and I mean defensively you really just got to limit uh, Geno Smith Michael Vick whatever quarterback's going to start uh, limit their scramble opportunities contain the edge against them uh, constantly have a, uh, a person in their face uh, when they're making throws on the run we struggled with mobile quarterbacks this season with Russell Wilson and Alex Smith I'm not saying Geno Smith is as as good as either one of those guys, but again, we have struggled with mobile quarterbacks. Geno Smith definitely is a very capable athlete at the quarterback position. Uh, so if we, we contain the edge against him, not allow him to have so many scramble opportunities, stop the run game, limit Eric Decker, uh, offensively we should be fine, and then offensively we just got to do what we got to do. Um, I, I don't know how much success we're going to have running the ball in that. The Jets' defense are pretty solid against the run, um, but they're very terrible secondary. So hopefully Peyton Manning won't uh, you know let the crowd affect him, and our offense won't let the crowd affect him, and, and they won't play down to their competition. And we should have a good day offensively, especially through the air again. So... Um, should be a win against the Jets on Sunday, but again, you never know in this league. Can't underestimate them at all. They're at home, um, and they really need a win. They're, they're a desperate team, and that's always dangerous. So that's it for me, guys. Great win for the Broncos. Moved to 3-1, and one, beat uh, Arizona 41-20 to 20 again. Thanks for, for sticking uh, with me through this video. I know a lot of rambling. I apologize for that. My videos are so long, but I appreciate the support as always. Uh, leave me a com comment below with what 
you thought of this uh, game by the Broncos uh, here against the Cardinals, what you thought about our performance, and if you're a Cardinals fan, what did you think about your team's performance, and, and what are you looking for your team going forward? And uh, what's your guys' thoughts on the game against the Jets on Sunday? For the Broncos, move to 3-1. and one. Hopefully uh, we'll destroy the Jets on, on Sunday and move to 4-1. and one. As always, go Broncos. Hopefully we'll be 4-1 and one on Sunday.